Friends, welcome to tonight's Maundy Thursday worship service. We invite you, wherever you are, to participate with us in remembering the love and grace and great sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord. Throughout the service, we will be hearing the story of what happened that night 2,000 years ago from different voices in our congregation. We will also be inviting you to participate in communion with us today. So, at this time, it might be good to go into your kitchen and see what you have available to you. Perhaps you have a loaf of bread, or maybe you made the common loaf with the recipe that Janice Psalm provided to us earlier this week. Or maybe, like me, you have some crackers and juice to eat. Whatever you have available to you, the important thing is that we remember that Jesus Christ loved us so much that he was prepared to give himself for us this evening. So friends, as we prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in a call to worship. In remembrance, we gather to be with the one who teaches us the meaning of faithfulness. In remembrance, we worship, lifting our voices to the one who calls us to love one another. In remembrance, we feast, breaking the bread which makes us whole and drinking the cup which fills us with grace. Amen. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their place and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said, to them it is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me for the son of man goes as it is written of him but woe to that one by when the son of man is betrayed it would have been better for that one not to have been born would you join us now in singing an upper room in our board prepare. Oh, 
on the night that Jesus died, as they were eating, and after giving thanks, he took bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for your sins. When you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, tonight your table is not an ordinary table. Your table is the Lord's table. And all who believe in Jesus Christ are welcome to the feast to dine with him this evening. So with whatever you have, we invite you to take part in communion with us at this time. And after you have partaken, we will be taking a few moments in silence to remember Jesus' love and his grace and his great sacrifice for us. It may be helpful to come to this moment with your palms facing upward to reflect in God. So at this time, we invite you to partake. Amen. Let us now continue our journey this night with Christ leading the way from the table into the garden. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with them Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Did you want us now singing, Tis Midnight, and an Olive's Brow? Tis Midnight, and an Olive's Brow. Yeah. 
found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd of swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. You may find it strange that on the Thursday night that we are to be remembering Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, we might skip ahead to Sunday morning. Well, as Mark tells this story in chapter 14, we hear of a young man who fled just as the disciples also fled. The arresting officers would have apprehended this young man except that when they reached out for him, his clothes tore and he escaped, running away naked. Now the only other time that Mark uses the term young man is in chapter 16, when a young man dressed in white makes the proclamation of Jesus' resurrection to the women as they drew near to the tomb. Mark twice mentions a young man, once fleeing in fear, running right out of his clothes, <laughs> and once at Jesus' open grave, clothed in white. So we must ask, is Mark indicating that all of us who desert Jesus have a new opportunity for following by God's grace? Perhaps it is possible. But let us now return to the Garden of Gethsemane this night. And let us pray with Jesus Christ for all that is to come in the coming days. To join us in singing hymn number 220, Go to Dark Gethsemane. We'll sing the first and the second verses. Go to Dark
keep watch with Jesus this night.